very good afternoon to everybody. Okay, and anybody else we see? Nobody else. Okay. So the key thing I'm going to do today, we'll be running through your homework stuff. Okay, and any other stuff uh, that you are not clear about. Okay, let's do a very quick recap on what we have learned so far. We have done completing a square. We have done factorization. How to solve quadratic equation uh, using factorization technique. We have also done formula method. Am I correct? So the latest thing we have done is formula method. So very quickly, just tell me. <coughs> Every time when I'm given a quadratic equation, I share with you there are certain rules that we must we must abide by, right? We must stick to those rules. Okay, what is the first thing that we must always do when we have a quadratic uh, equation that we are supposed to solve? Do I just jump straight into the formula? I said no, right? There's one step that we must always do. We must always arrange in what order? Come on, talk to me. Everybody, everybody, verbalize, articulate your learning. Come on, arrange in x square x. Number equals to zero. Is that okay? I say you can always arrange in the form of x square x number equals to zero. Are we cool with it? Can we remember? Remember, our girls, I want you to articulate, you've got to speak it out. Because when you voice out your learning, right, your subconscious mind will pick it up better. You have a greater tendency of remembering this. Okay, this is to help you in your learning. So after I arrange it in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero, x squared x number equals to zero, what's the next thing I tell you we must always do? Ensure that the coefficient of x squared is? Must it be one? No, always ensure that it is positive. Always ensure that the coefficient of x squared is positive. Okay, the, why do we do that? I've shared a reason with you. When you do factorization, I noticed over the years that uh, when students have a negative uh, coefficient for x squared, when they factorize, there's a tendency of them making mistakes. So to help you, we always standardize, uh, standardize the procedure. Arrange in the form of x squared x number equals zero. Ensure that the coefficient x squared is positive. Then we continue working with the problem. Are we cool? Okay. Very quickly, tell me what is the formula method, huh? Because that was the last thing that we left off, right? Remember, x equals to come on, shut up. X equals to minus b plus minus. Square root b square minus 4ac over a. Oh, very good. Where's the minus? I saw from your homework some of you did this. Is it the same? It's the same thing, right? Just that instead of writing plus minus, the person split it into two. Are we cool? Yes? I want to tell you one thing, okay? I know his aim at, it's not mine for you, okay? But I want you to learn something. Girls, every time when you don't know anything, there are three things I told you you must do. What are the three things which you didn't practice in Miss Lim's lesson? What are the three things? Number one, you get the teacher to what? Come on, we talk about it. Repeat. You always get a teacher to repeat. Thank you very much, Divya. We get a teacher to repeat first, which you all did not. Number two, after letting the teacher repeat, you still don't get it. What do you do? Can you give me another example? Ask the teacher, teacher, can you give me another example? What is the third thing? After repeating, give you another example, you still don't get it. Get the teacher to paraphrase. Remember, teacher, can I explain it in a different manner? Is there another way of understanding this? Can you help me understand this part? Can you explain it in a different way? Always do these three things. You must remember, girls, the learning art must not just come from the teacher teaching you and then you just soak it in, just suck it in. It's not like that. You have to actively seek for understanding. Do you understand? I want to ask you girls a question. Will you have two answers all the time? From your homework, you always get two answers. Am I correct? You always get two roots. Will you always get two roots? Must you always get two roots? No. So basically, it depends on... It, it must depend on... There must be a certain factor that influences this entire... Uh, the, the results. When you get two roots. Just a question. For a quadratic equation, can you get three answers? Can you get three roots? Not possible, right? So you can get only you can get two roots. Can you get one root? Is it possible? Possible. Can you get zero roots at all? Yes. What determines the number of roots? Do you all realize that? What is the key thing that affects this entire uh, number of roots? Okay, it is actually this expression over here. 
This B square minus 4 AC. There's a name given to it. It's called the discriminant. B square minus 4 AC is called the discriminant. Okay, this one Miss Ling will run through with you in greater detail when you do your roots. Okay, but to share with you, just to let you know something a little bit more. Every time when the discriminant is positive, if it is positive, you end up with two roots. When this is greater than zero, you have two real roots. When we say real, what we mean is you have two roots up. That basically is a real number. When your discriminant is equal to zero, do you all know that you all have only one real, one real root? It is actually a repeated root. Are you all aware of things like that? No? Uh, yes, because of the graph. When this is smaller than zero, what you have is no real roots. When this is negative, right? Because from your homework I saw, when, uh, when some of you actually did something that was not correct, uh, when you express your a x plus b x plus c equals zero, you jumble up the position, so your a, b, and the c are all numbers that's not correct. So when you plug it in and uh, you square root the number inside, it becomes you have a negative number. Example: square root negative five. Example: when you punch your calculator, it's an error. So you end up with no real roots. Okay, so I'm just trying to share with you this is what happening, what is going on in your homework. So every time when you do your homework, right, when you get an answer, I need you all to check. Whatever answer you have, let's say you have two answers, always take the value, plug it back into your AXO plus B plus C, check whether is it really equals to zero or not. Do you understand what I'm saying? Always check. Okay? This was what we have done uh, in the previous lesson. Then we move on to problem solving. Am I correct? Is there any questions that you cannot do? Any questions? I'm here to help, but you must tell me. So if you have no problems with the homework, huh, I will move on to today's lesson. We are still going to do problem solving, crafting of the equation. That's all that I want to do today. Plus x is question 2. Huh? This is found on page, page 24. Okay, x squared plus x minus 12 equals to 0. And then over here, uh, she attempted to factorize this. X is equal to minus 4 or 3 and then uh, she answered the question therefore the two numbers are minus 4, minus 3 and uh, 4 and 3 Am I correct? You should have these two set of numbers Okay, over here Everyone watch here, everyone watch here Over here, which answers are the correct one that we are looking for in this problem? Is it the first pair or the second pair? Or both pairs? Second one. second one. Why is it the second one? Because when you read the question, okay, I, I shared this. Did I run through Poya with you? No? Okay, Poya is a uh, uh, is a problem solving technique. I practice this all the time uh, with my students when you go through problem solving. Number one, understand the problem. This involves circling up keywords. You must circle up keywords. Draw relationships between the words uh, to make meaning out of it to help you solve the problem. Sometimes it even includes like drawing a picture to visualize it because when you can see, you can do it. Okay? Then uh, that's number one. Oh yes, first stage, understand the problem. Number two, uh, what is your plan? So carry out your mistakes. Number three, carry out your plan. Number four, check and look back. We have one problem which uh, I know that uh, uh, Yumi may not have practiced. Number one, understand the problem. Do you know you must circle up keywords in this question? Okay, let's look at the question again. What is a keyword that Yumi may have or Divya may have forgotten to highlight? Okay, let's read. The difference between two positive numbers. What is a keyword I must circle up here? The word difference, right? The difference between what? Two positive numbers. So. We must make it a habit to circle up keywords such as this. When we realize that the two numbers are positive, the moment I have this, I'll reject it already. This is not applicable. Rejected. Because it doesn't answer our, our question. When x is negative, you plug it inside, 12 over negative 4 is negative 3. Therefore, you know it's rejected. Are we clear? So have I answered your, your question? Okay? So circle up keywords. That will help you answer the problem, the, the, the question. Okay? For those who are slightly sharper, you will already reject this from the start already. Because X cannot be negative. Are we clear? Cannot. 
Okay, let's move on. Uh, 3B, are you okay already? Great. Uh, the next question is question 5, huh? 5C? Okay, let me do 5C for you, huh? Everyone watch, okay? Okay, put down your pencil here. Okay, let's run through the process, okay? Remember, I'm not interested in the answer. I'm only interested in the process. I want to teach you how to fish, right? Then you can you can feed yourself a lifetime. You can look here, okay? Don't just copy down the answer. That's, that's not useful. Over here, to manage to solve for the value of x, what I can do is, you notice over here, I have two terms. Am I correct? I have a fraction here plus a fraction equals to 1. Suggest to me what I can do to the left hand side first. What can we do? We can combine it together, right? What's the process called? Simplif we can simplify them. Simplification. Let's add them up, simplify them. Over here, what is my denominator? 5 bracket 2x minus 3. My LCM, right? To add up the two fractions. Am I correct? To ensure that you are able to add up two fractions, we always make sure that the denominator is the same. So in this case, what is the LCM of 5 and 2x minus 3? Simply just 5, 2x minus 3. So what do I have on top? This is x minus 2 and 2x minus 3. Notice I put a bracket over here. x minus 2 times 2x minus 3 plus 5 times 1 equals to 1. So far, so good. So far, so good. Okay, now let me expand this uh, expression. So I have 2x squared uh, minus 3x minus 4 is minus 7x plus 6 plus 5. Over this is uh, 10x minus 15 equals to 1. Am I correct to say that 1 is the same as 1 over 1? Yes? Okay, remember we did this in sec 1 or sec and sec 2? When we have this situation, do we like denominator? Do we want denominator? What should we do? Cross, multiply. We cross, multiply. Right? Cross multiplication, we can get rid of the denominator. So this is 2x squared minus 7x. This is 11. So I multiply this up. This will give me 10x minus 15. So far, so good. Okay, what must we do after this line? Talk to me, what must we do? Put it in one particular form. What is that form? X, x squared, x number equals to? Zero. zero. So I have 2x squared minus 17x plus 26 equals to zero. Okay, so far so good. Okay, over here, we can try to factorize. Okay? Uh, or, if people who don't want to factorize, they say, Mr. Ng, this 26 is too, I don't know, it's not complicated. I'm not very sure if they can factorize nicely or not. What can I do? Talk to me. Formula method. Formula method. Thank you very much. Formula method. Notice in the form of x squared, x number equals to 0. Ensure that the coefficient x squared is positive. So now I write down what is my a. What is my a, everybody? 2. What is my b? Negative 17 or 17? Negative 17. What is my c? 26. Always pay a, a careful attention to your B and your C uh, because sometimes it can be negative, it can be positive. Okay? But for your A, because we standard rule, we make it always positive, we can just uh, 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 work easily with a positive A. So now I've created the formula. So X equals to, I write down the formula, minus B plus minus square root B squared minus 4AC over 2A. Please take note, square root sign must be long enough to cover the 4AC. The over sign must be long enough to cover the negative sign. So this will give me minus minus 17 plus minus square root. Is this okay? Is this alright? Why is this not alright? Very good. Bracket the negative 17. Okay, it must look like this. Are we cool? I've shared this a million times with you. Uh. If let's say you have minus 2 squared, this is minus 4. But minus 2 bracket squared is minus 2 times minus 2 equals to positive 4. There is a difference. You must know the difference. Remember, anytime you don't know your stuff, uh, just go back at home and watch the whole video again. Is that okay? This will help to, uh, by watching it, by going through what we do in class, it will improve your learning. It will. Are we cool with this? Okay, so from here, you just happily punch your calculator and then you'll get your two answers on it.
from your homework, uh, both 3B and 3C alike, I notice there are students who have this line, you know, then they jump to this answer. You cannot do that, okay? Okay, the bracket form. Okay, I give you an example. Uh. Okay, can you give me what is this two answer? Somebody? 3 I said 6 point? 5 1. That's it. Exact? And then this one? 2. Okay, uh, in this case, this means this can be factorized. But what if you do things like this? You add in a 6.5x minus 2. Then you all kick it, you all pretend x equals to this, right? Can you do this, girls? Can you do this? I tried to make me go to rehab, I said. No. When you do factorization, uh, factorize. Uh, what we remember factorize the word is factor factorize the root word is the word factor it means you got to ask yourself what are the factors of 26 there's 1 26 there's 2 and 13 am i correct you, you think about it is 6.5 a factor no all your factors are electron numbers so this is not factorization once i see a decimal over here I know you all use calculator to do no, no, Oh yes, okay, if you put it in factorized form, it means how much do you write it at? 2x minus 13, the other one is? Is it that you wrote this? Yeah, that is right, this is perfect. This is perfect. This is the factorizing, uh, factorization technique. This one is correct, this one is wrong. Okay, so this is wrong. This one is correct. Okay? From your homework, I see some of you, uh, I tell you, amazing. Example, uh, this answer is 6.5134567889. You all will do this, you know. Bracket x minus 6.12356789. You say, like, what? How do you factorize that? It's impossible. So don't do that. Are we okay? So always do, uh, you can always write this technique. Just write this now, the formula method, and then voila, pop out the two answers. Okay, what happens, remember I told you Poya's four stage, mo four, four stage model. Understand the problem, what is your plan, carry out your plan, check and look back. After you are done with this, remember, I don't want you girls to just yeah, 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 pop the champagne and celebrate, you don't do that. What do you do at this juncture? You always check. How do you check? X equals to 2, submit back into the question, right? Then you find your calculator, easy equals to 1. X equals to 6.5, plug it inside, do you have equals to 1? Are we clear? Always check. Because uh, I, I can share with you, uh, all solving questions can be checked in exam. Walk out the exam hall with the marks secure in the pocket. That is important. Okay? Don't just leave it, uh, you know, leaving to fake. Don't do that. Okay? Any other problems with the homework? With the remaining time, right? I want you to practice crafting out equation, especially uh, things that involve uh, speed and, and time. Okay? But that is very, very popular in exam. Turn me to your textbook, page 25. You will try question 6 first as a warm up. Okay, we try question 6 to see whether are you able to manage this problem. Okay, I don't need you to do part 3 and part 4, I just need you to do part 1 and part 2. Just try doing part 1 and part 2, craft out the equation, prove that, uh, show that it reduces to x squared minus 6x plus 597 equals to 0. I just need for you to do what I do this step. Are we clear? Okay, but there's one thing I want everyone to do, okay? As you read the question, practice your your poem. Practice circling up keywords. That is important. Sketch a diagram. It may help you visualize a problem. It will help you in solving the problem. Okay, how many of you can construct the equation? Raise your hand. Wow, very good. That's, that's everybody. Excellent. Okay, uh, I walk around and try to see some of you uh, were, were pretty strong. You can just write out uh, whatever you need straight away. I saw some girls drawing, sketching a diagram like this. This, my dear, is actually, believe it or not, you're actually practicing your poem. You're actually practicing uh, the stage of how to understand the problem. A sketch of the diagram will help you visualize the situation. When you can see it, you can do it. You must remember that, okay? The breath is X, so I know this is X. Am I right? So the parameter is 112cm. The question says, can you construct an, uh, can you write down an expression 
an expression for the length. What do you do? The length will be equals to what? Parameter minus 2x divided by 2. Do you, can you leave your answer like this? This 1, 1, 2, this 2, this 2. Can you leave your answer like this? No. Simplify your answer. So what do we have? Divide 2 by 2, what do I have? 56 minus x. Thank you very much. Is this okay? Okay, what if some of you don't know how to do? What if you all said, Mister, I can't visualize it like that straight away. Don't worry. Okay, I'll write in red ink uh, an alternative solution, okay? The breadth is x, so if the breadth is x, you can always let the length be what? Y. y. Am I correct? What now I'll write in red, uh. let the length be y. See? Is that okay? Okay, the parameter tells me what? x plus y plus x plus y will give me what? 1, 1, 2. So far so good? Yes. yes? So by tidying this up, this is a 2x plus 2y equals to your 1, 1, 2. So 2y equals to your 1, 1, 2 minus 2x. y equals to your uh, 1, 1, 2 minus 2x over 2, which will give you your 56 minus x. You think about it, isn't this y the length that you're trying to find? Do you, are you all with me? Yes? Okay, over here, uh, the next part asks you to prove that the area is something. So area is equal to what? Talk to me. Area is equal to? Of a rectangle? Length and breadth. So in this case, I can take my length, which is 56 minus x, uh, multiply by x. This will give me what? 597. From there, you just tidy it up. Uh, you will get your equation. So this is x squared minus 56x plus 597 equals to 0. Then after that, what do you write here? Show. Remember, huh? if the question says prove that something, 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 once you're done, you say proven. So if the question says show that, blah, 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 then you say show. Is that okay? So until here, do we have problem with this? If I wanted to continue solving this, will you try to do factorization? No, why? Because this number is a bit, this is too huge, right? 527. What are the effectors of one? I don't know. Could be too many. Yeah, uh, I'll use a formula method. Okay, over here, I'll use a formula method because this uh, number is too huge. Okay, just a, a side question. Huh? When do you use formula method? When do you use factorization method? Use factorization method when? When what? <coughs> the numbers are small. Okay, when it looks like you can factorize, then you try it, okay? Another possible situation, uh, paper one. Emacs paper one. Okay, because uh, some of the questions in Emacs paper one, you look, the numbers are manageable, you know it's factorization. When do you use uh, formula method? Paper two, probably, and also when there is this key uh, phrase. Giving your answer to 3SF. Giving your answer to 2DP. When you see something that's like that, 3SF 2DP, you know it will be formula method already. Are we clear? Can you all remember that? Yes. Okay. Second situation when you know you have to use formula method, when the numbers you're working with are huge, the coefficients or the constant terms are huge, we use formula method. Go. Cool. Okay, so from here you will, you will go home to nice practice and solve this on your own. Okay, now can we do something a little bit tougher, okay? Yes. Look at page 20, uh, 26 of, uh, of your textbook, question 10. Rui Feng and Jin Wei represented their class in a 10 km race. They started running at the same speed of x km per hour. After 2 km, Rui Feng increased his speed by 1 km per hour and ran the remaining distance at a constant speed of x plus 1 km per hour. Jin Wei, very constant, he maintained his speed at x km per hour throughout the whole race. So write down expression for Rui Feng. And then part 2 says, given that Rui Feng completed the race 40 minutes earlier, can you uh, come up formula and equation and show that it reduces to the total weight? Okay? Okay, for you to do this question, uh, there's one triangle that must come to your mind. You learned this in primary school. Okay, do you remember this triangle? Daily straight time, remember? This is your distance, speed, and time. When you want to find distance, you cover it, speed times time. When you want to find time, distance divided by speed. 
So use this triangle to help you with this question. Okay, are you done? Can I start? Can I start? Okay, watch here. Okay, we do uh we do chin wei one. Chin wei is easier. For the whole journey, his speed was X. So if the distance is 10 kilometers, what is his time? Talk to me. 10 over X. Units, units. Hours. Thank you very much. Always write units. Huh? Next. Break home. How does break home run? That's right. So for the first, uh, how long did you take to run the first two kilometers? So it's 2 over X. So far, so good. Are you all with me? Smile at me, my dear. Are you okay? Yes. Plus the remaining, the remaining portion. He ran eight kilometers and he increased his speed by one kilometers per hour. So it's eight over what? Come on, talk to me. X plus Y. You can leave the answer like this, or you can simplify. Just add them up. Okay, how many of you have this? Raise your hand. Okay, how many of you have this line? This one. This one. Okay, which is correct? Both are correct. Look at the marks to decide what to do. If this question is worth two marks, will you stop at the first line or will you stop at the first line? Come on, talk to me, girls. Third line, right? If this is only worth one mark, where will you stop? First line. That's it. Are we cool? Yes. So over here, uh, this is what we have. Let's continue to part two of the question. Part two says, Ray Fong finished the race 40 minutes earlier than uh, Chin Wei. Okay, now I need to ask you, uh, you know it's somebody's time, minus somebody's time give you uh, your 40 minutes, right? Okay, you talk to me now. Who is faster? Ray Fong is faster or Chin Wei is faster? Ray Fong is faster. So this fellow here is faster. Faster means you take a longer time or shorter time to complete the journey. So this is shorter time. Right? So this must be longer time. So now you tell me, is it 1 minus 2 or 2 minus 1? Which one? 2 minus 1. The one with the longer time minus the shorter time to give you your 14 minutes. Are we cool? Okay, so I will do this. I'll watch. So part 2, I say 10 over x minus 10x plus 2 over x bracket x plus 1 equals to 14. Yay! Is this correct? Why not? Why is this wrong? Okay, everyone look at is this correct? Talk to me girls. Why is this wrong? Very good. Hours, hours, minutes. What? Don't get caught. Okay, teachers learn to set this up. Question and every time you put in teacher. All levels also say the same thing. They like to do this and then after the minutes. But don't get caught. Is that okay? So over here, how about how the minutes? Is that writing 40 or do I write? 40 over 60. Or you simply write 2 third. Because once you put over 60, you have converted it to hours already. So now what do I have to do? I tidy up. Okay, to tidy this whole uh, equation up, you get what you need to uh, find. Some students try to do this, multiply the, the denominator. Please don't do that. Huh? If you do that, you end up with a cubic situation. Right? Our friend here got cubic ring, he's smiling at me. Okay, how much should you do? Let me teach you. Huh? What's, the denom what's the LCM for the denominator? This x, x, bracket x, so what should I do? Times what? Come on, talk to me. x plus 1. So times x plus 1, times x plus 1. Then the denominator will be the same. I can simplify merge the two fractions into one fraction with a single denominator. So this will be 10 bracket x plus 1 minus 10 x plus 2 over x bracket x plus 1 equals to this is 2 third. Huh? Is this correct? Ah very good. Why is this wrong? Remember always remember teachers love to do this for exam. Don't get caught. There's an invisible bracket here. Invisible bracket. Don't get caught. So there's a bracket here. Is that okay? Okay? So now we just simplify and tidy up this whole thing. We will get what we need to prove already. So the expanded out is 10x plus 10 minus 10x minus 2 uh, over this is x squared plus x equals to 2 thirds. 
So the 10x and the 10x can be cancelled out. So from here, there's a denominator. What do you all suggest that I do? Cross, cross multiply, right? So I cross multiply. I will have um, three times eight is twenty-four equals two x squared plus two x. So tiny up, I will have this. Okay, this is okay, doable. Can everybody do this? Can or not, my friend? I hope I can convince you that it is not as difficult as what you think it is.